Welcome to Conversation. Our guest today is Ryan Hogan. He is the president of Rainbow Pride Union. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. So could you tell our viewers what your organization is about? So Rainbow Pride Union was formed in um, 1971 on campus. So it's one of our oldest groups on campus. And currently, it's the largest LGBT group we have. So we do a mix of both fun social programming um, as well as educational programming and ways to try and improve our university. In terms of homosexual rights, transgender rights, um, gender equality, uh, it's, been a, it's been a struggle throughout the past 10 years in getting stuff passed. Now as a college student, since college is you know, a time of experimentation, people say, um, what has been your college experience being a uh, part of this organization? So being part of RPU has really let me get more involved in our community. Um, and it's also let me uh, share in a leadership role in this community, which I've really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really rewarding to be able to fight for and to be able to see positive changes be realized in our own community here. OK, that's good. Yeah, and um, I spoke to Women's Student Union before, and one of the things that we have seen change is the gender-neutral bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we spoke before, you said your organization really fought for that. So could you tell our viewers more about that? Yeah, so a couple members of our organization joined a committee to um, try and establish and work through the regulation and policy of these gender-neutral bathrooms. Um, like you said, we've been successful in achieving um, some gender-neutral bathrooms on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we're continuing to fight for um, expanding those and also looking into multi-stall gender-neutral bathrooms, mm -hmm. uh, which we don't have yet. Okay. Now, when you look at certain um, issues, national issues, and you look at Georgia mm -hmm. and other states that want to block gender-neutral bathrooms and, and want to really divide people who identify in a certain, um, mm -hmm. who, who identify with a certain gender, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's unfortunate to see these policies that are now being passed in states like, states like North Carolina, but it just kind of highlights the importance um, and the positive changes that we're doing here at Binghamton and you're seeing more around the country. Mm -hmm. Like for example, we saw a really big backlash against North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, both many private companies as well as states were refusing travel. Mm -hmm. um, so it's unfortunate to see the opposition to these laws, but it's also very, very positive to see all the support that we're getting. So as a a uh, homosexual male, um, do you personally face any challenges and um, how was your process in coming out or um, living a certain life um, which may be unusual to perhaps your parents or perhaps to your community? Yeah, so I think I was very fortunate to grow up in a liberal suburb of Albany. Um, so I think for myself, um, I had a lot of privileges that many others don't. Um, so when I came to Binghamton, I was already out and I was able to you know immediately jump into our LGBT community here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately a lot of students don't have that and even in college some students aren't able to come out. Uh, so I think as just a white cisgendered uh, homosexual male I, I still have a lot of privileges. I hope to be able to take advantage of those um, to be able to continue to fight for all the people in our community that don't share these privileges yet. Okay. Um. So you said you know you're a white cisgender, and although you are homosexual um, and you do experience discrimination, um, there's still other you know members um, such as you know transgender, uh, perhaps black gay males or black um, females who do or who are underprivileged. So what are some of the plights and some of the issues they face, uh, minority gay individuals that are unique to them and not unique to perhaps a white male? Well, I think that a lot of um, more visible minorities, uh, such as black or maybe transgender or both, they suffer a lot more in terms of educational opportunities, employment, housing. There's a lot of ways that those communities are targeted in ways that I wouldn't be as a white cisgender male. So in terms of culture, you know, we really seen a, a shift in, in my perspective. You know, when I was in um, middle school, uh, you know, we would people would say, you know, no homo, where it wasn't like an offensive term, but it was sort of like you had Lil Wayne and you had mm -hmm. these rappers who say, hey, I love you, man, but like no homo. And you see in the transition where even saying such a term is very offensive. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is which is you know rightfully so and then going on to high school you sort of see where especially our generation we become more okay with it and with a with or with programs like Modern Family, um, even in terms of the rap culture, you see rappers who are very homophobic, um, sort of s embracing the culture and sort of accepting other people like Frank Ocean. Mm -hmm. So just in terms of culture, um, are you encouraged uh, about the culture and the ways that we're going, or is there still? Of course, there still needs improvement. But what are your thoughts on the culture right now? Yeah, I think the positive changes are snowballing in the best way. Um, and that it's really the more visibility we have. And I think for most people, the best, you know, the most convincing argument is having a friend or family that comes out as mm -hmm. LGBT or queer. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as we see that, more and more feel comfortable and more and more people get affected as more people are able to come out. Okay. Um, and in terms of coming out, uh, in terms of, you know, exploring your sexuality, um, is there any advice you give to somebody who is questioning who they are? Um, is Rainbow Union a good place to, to have a conversation? Yeah, I think there's a lot of student groups. Um, we have several LGBT specific groups like Rainbow Pride Union, Shades, and Cachette. Um, but also we found a lot of positive reactions in other student groups as well. So I think there are a lot of good resources here, especially for students. Mm -hmm. um, whether you just want to talk or whether you want to get more involved and even have a leadership role in the community. Okay. Do you find that your community is open? Do you find that you're able to perhaps find bars or to find locations outside of Binghamton that is more accepting of, uh, of individuals who have a certain uh, gender preference? Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the issues that we're looking to tackle in the future. Mm -hmm. Now we've had a lot of positive changes on campus but especially off campus, downtown, and nightlife, mm -hmm. LGBTQ individuals and students really don't feel safe mm -hmm. downtown um, in, sev in some bars. So these are, you know, we hope to have more educational programs and be able to reach out to change the atmosphere on campus, and mm -hmm. hopefully that'll carry over to the atmosphere downtown. So, you know, safety is a big issue, and having a safe space where individuals can feel feel secure. And I know one of the places is Binghamton. Um, you do have an annual drag show, which is very popular. Uh, so can you tell our viewers more about that? So our drag show is the event that I think we really hold most dear in our club. Um, this year was our 14th annual, and it's always a lot of fun. This year we had it in Anderson Center, and we had both a mix of student performers as well as professionals from the community. Mm -hmm. So it's really re rewarding to see students be able to get up and perform on stage and drag, and we're really impressed by a lot of them every year, too. Mm -hmm. Students do a really great job, so we're always happy mm -hmm. to have them perform. Yeah. Now, for our viewers, and um, even for myself for a time, I, I didn't understand the difference between uh, you have people who like dressing up, you have mm -hmm. people who are draggers, I guess, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if that's the correct <laughs> term, um, but then you have people who are transgender who mm -hmm. identify with a different sex. Mm -hmm. So there is a distinction between people who cross-dressers, mm -hmm. is, the, is the appropriate term, who cross-dress and you have people who are transgender. Mm -hmm. So could you enlighten our audience on the differences? Yeah, so I think our culture doesn't do a very good job of separating sex and gender. So sex is really your biological, um, your biological sex, and often that is defined by your genitalia, or you could define it as your chromosomes. Mm -hmm. Gender is completely different. Gender is all, gender is your internal sense of self, and um, we don't have to get into a sociological discussion, but you know, gender is a social construct, meaning that Every society makes it differently. Every society has different genders. Some have more than two. So maybe what is a drag queen? Well, a drag queen can be any person, any sex, any gender. Um, typically, you know, it's men dressing up and performing as women. Um, but that person could be a straight male. It could be a straight cis male, a gay cis male, you know, etc. It could be anyone. Um, drag is really the performance, dressing up and performing. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't necessarily align with any other identity. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, drag lets them express femininity. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't identify as a woman, you know, there may be parts of myself, there may be feminine aspects of myself that I want to express. Mm -hmm. Feminine aspects that our culture would otherwise not let me, but drag kind of gives you that opportunity mm -hmm. to dress feminine, to perform in any way that you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Drag is really about you feeling comfortable. So what is transgender? Transgender means that 
uh, my sex and my gender are not necessarily in line with each other. Mm -hmm. So maybe I was born with the body of a man, my sex is male, um, genitalia or chromosomes, mm -hmm. but my gender is female, meaning that in my mind and mm -hmm. how I identify mm -hmm. is female. In a sense of being in a drag show, um, it allows the male to really embrace the feminine side. And we as people have both. We have our male side and we have our, our female side. And it is to say that we are each not one thing, uh, that we are more a sum of our parts. And do you find that it's, it's, it, I believe it's easier to be a tomboy, it's easier for a girl to wear jeans and to mm -hmm. be one of the guys than it is for a guy to want to be one of the girls. Um, so in terms of culture, how can we dis dis um, destigmatize that and sort of show that it's okay if you want to dress up and it's not shameful? Yeah, so I think it's a great point what you brought up that it's much more acceptable for women to be tomboys than for men to be effeminate in general in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think drag in itself, in some ways it, it kind of pokes fun at that. Um, a lot of drag for many people is being over the top effeminate, you know, mm -hmm. having excess makeup and really being the most glamorous, glamorous woman you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. So I think in some ways drag kind of helps poke fun at that and shows us that, you know, they're trying to personify our ideal woman, our culture's ideal woman. Mm -hmm. And in many ways that's ridiculous because, you know, there's no one definition of a woman. So I think drag kind of helps break down these and especially allowing men to um, dress in feminine, uh, especially allowing men to express themselves more femininely. Okay. As president of the Rainbow Pride Union, um, what are some of your aspirations that you want to sort of leave behind since you are a senior? Well, I think what we're most excited for is this new LGBTQ center. And it's going to, I think it's going to bring a positive change to RP as well, because it'll really let us focus on some of these bigger uh, social events we have, like the drag show. I think those events are really powerful in making a strong sense of community. Mm -hmm. And the LGBT Center, uh, the LGBTQ Center will be there to support us and to offer other services, both to students and to faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, services that RPU itself and student groups really can't provide. Okay, okay. Well, Ryan, thank you for yeah. being here. And <laughs> uh, I'm glad to have you here. Um, thank you for joining us. Bye.